The 1950 Indianapolis 500 mile race was rain shortened on lap 138 and Johnny Parsons was flagged the winner. Bill Holland finished second and Maury Rose finished third. Parsons led 115 laps driving the wind's friction proving special. Clark Gable congratulates Johnny after the race. Universal Studios used Gilmore Stadium to film the race sequences for the movie Buck Privates Come Home, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Duke Nalen and Louis Tomei did the driving. Two cars were used for number 17. Tomei did the stunt driving in the car with a four-speed transmission. In 1950, Gilmore Stadium was sold to CBS for $6 million. It was a sad day in racing, and this will be the last season for this great speedway. All the top drivers raced at Gilmore. 52 of them won races there. The Heath and Vukovic battles were classic. Bob Barker leads the first lap of this 100 lap feature in January 1950. Barker led every lap. Vic Edelbrock owned an Offy powered Curtis and a Ford powered Curtis. Both cars won a lot of races. He had a special passion for his Ford Curtis. Vic Edelbrock had had a dream or, you know, a, a wish. Uh, in life to win a main event at Gilmore Stadium in a Ford. And of course, we were able to accomplish that with this automobile. And uh, it was really a big uh, thing for him. And we talked about it many times afterwards. But uh, for me, it was an unbelievable thrill as well because Gilmore was the premier midget racetrack in the world. And to run there against a full field of office and win the race was a great, great thrill. The last race at Gilmore was the Thanksgiving Grand Prix. Bill Zaring won the race in Ernie Casale's Offie. Approximately five million people saw races at Gilmore. Sacramento was the 10th race of the 1950 championship season. Tony Bettenhausen and Jack McGrath had two wins each. Promoter J.C. Agajanian had all the top drivers and 15,000 fans on hand for the 100 mile race. Bettenhausen sat on the pole and led the first 10 laps. Walt Faulkner cooked a rut and slid into Bettenhausen, causing him to crash on lap 10. Bill Schindler was flagged the winner. A recheck of the scoring tape gave Duke Dinsmore the win and moved Schindler to second place. The Darlington 200-mile race was the last race of the year. The mile-and-a-quarter track was paved and fast. Bettenhausen poses with his kids prior to the start of the 200-mile race. Paul Russo was unable to start the race at Darlington and gave the ride to Johnny Parsons. Wilbur Shaw congratulates Parsons for winning Darlington and Banks for winning the championship. Lee Wallard won the 1951 Indianapolis 500 mile race. Lee led 165 laps and picked up $63,600 for first place. Less than a week after the Indy 500, Wallard was seriously burned in a sprint car race at Reading, Pennsylvania. After three years of rehabilitation, Lee decided to retire. The Langhorn 100-miler was the third race of the 51 season. Bettenhausen led the last 16 laps and won in the same car that Wallard had won the Indy 500. Tony's win at Milwaukee two weeks earlier in the Bellinger car made it three wins in three races. Bill Vukovic led 15 laps but dropped out midway through the race. The 150-mile race at Bay Meadows was the last race of the season. Parsons won it, and Bettenhausen captured the 51 National Driving Championship. Of the 33 drivers that qualified for the 1952 Indianapolis 500, most had graduated from the mighty midget ranks, including Troy Rutman. Troy led 44 laps and set a new track record for the 500-mile distance. World champion Alberto Ascari finished 31st. Troy looked like a sure winner of the 52 championship, but on August 17th, he was seriously injured in a sprint car race at Cedar Rapids and was out for the season. Dayton Speedway presented a sprint car race on August 31st. Jim Rigsby entered the race driving the Bob Estes Special. Rigsby ran over Gene Force, launching him over the wall and into a cornfield below. Never had a chance and died on the way to the hospital. Bill Schindler was another sprint car fatality September 20th, racing at Allentown, Pennsylvania. Joe James died from injuries received at San Jose on November 2nd. Chuck Stevenson won the 1952 National Driving Championship. Veteran Johnny McDowell was fatally injured at Milwaukee. The 1953 Indianapolis 500 was the hottest on record. Bill Vukovic led 195 laps of the 200-lap race. 
Tired, dirty, and hot, he tries to answer questions and finally gestures that he can't hear. Carl Scarborough pulled in on lap 70 with heat exhaustion and died a short time later. The AAA sprint cars ran several times at Ileana Speedway in 53. Paul Russo and Tommy Hinterschitz were always tough. Hinterschitz leads the cars into turn number one on the first lap, but loses two positions. Pat O'Connor passes Tommy for third. Jimmy Davies tries to hold on to fourth position. Davies runs by himself in turn one. Hinnerschitz prefers the high groove. Tommy was a master on the dirt tracks. Davies finished fourth. Paul Russo won the race and had four girls waiting in victory circle. The Milwaukee 100 miler was the second championship race in 1953. Manny Ayulo leads Roger Ward to the rest of the field on the first lap. McGrath took the lead on lap 15. Sam Hanks powers through turn three. Mike Nazareth and Chuck Stevenson race side by side. Johnny Thompson and Jimmy Bryan run fifth and sixth. Dwayne Carter tries to hold off Hanks. McGrath still leads. Jerry Hoyt passes Russo for third. McGrath has led all but 14 laps. Hoyt is still third. On lap 99, McGrath leads. Brian is second, Hoyt third, and Russo fourth. McGrath heads for the checkered flag. Jack gets a trophy for winning and a Yulo for fast time. Sports cars were a little wild in the 50s, and Wilmot Hills Raceway in Milwaukee had its share of thrills. This driver gets sideways and flips at least six times. It looks pretty bad. Unbelievably, he walks away unhurt. Aurora Downs had a half-mile dirt track in Illinois. IMCA and other organizations sanction races there. Many of the top IMCA drivers were on hand and 22 cars were entered. A packed grandstand watches as the cars roar into turn one. Bobby Grimm jumps into the lead. It's a three-way battle for third. Bobby Grimm leads Bob Slater in car number 29. Grimm took the win in the Honor Offie. Bob Slater finished second in the 20-lap race. The Detroit 100-mile race was run on July 4th. The track was very rough. Roger Ward drove the M.A. Walker Special into Victory Circle. Alan Heath finished second and Brian third. Jack McGrath set a new qualifying record for the 1953 Milwaukee 100 mile stock car race. Marshall Teague was second fast and starts outside McGrath. The race is on and everyone charges into turn one. Jim Rathman gets past McGrath and Teague. Third place is up for grabs. Teague took over first on the backstretch. McGrath struggles to stay with the leaders. A car is stalled on the backstretch. Jack is unable to avoid it and flips, but climbs out unhurt. Sam Hanks takes the lead in number 71 and heads for the checkered flag. T congratulates Hanks. Alice Hanks gives Sam a kiss in victory circle. Jack McGrath accepts his Fast Time Trophy. The Milwaukee 200 in August drew over 30,000 fans. Bob Swiker took the lead on lap one. McGrath was close by in second. Davies, Russo, and Ayuto follow. Don Freeland and Hinterschitz are sixth and seventh. Swiker had Parsons on his tail. Danny Oaks is driving a steady race. 
Weikert still leads on lap 44. Chuck Stevenson has moved into fourth in car number 98. McGrath led for a few laps and is holding on to third. Brian takes over 10th. Al Nide and Russo are 11th and 12th at the halfway point. McGrath and Swiker continue to battle. Parsons is all over McGrath and passes in turn four. 20 cars are still in the race on lap 100. Ayulo has moved into second place. Swikert is nursing a sick car. On lap 101, Jerry Hoyt flipped in turn three. It looked bad, but luckily Jerry was only shaken up. Chuck Stevenson took the lead on lap 165 and held it through lap 200. Stevenson took home a little over $6,500. Ken Rubright sets the pace for the start of the IMCA race on the Salem High Banks. Floyd Duvall spins his Ranger-powered car in turn four. Wayne Allspaugh leads heading into turn one. Bobby Grimm's car is smoking. Allspa heads for the checkered flag and wins in front of a large crowd. The first Hoosier 100 was on September 26th. Manuel Ayulo and Don Freeland set the pace for the start of the first Hoosier 100, September 26th, 1953. Ayulo leads. Swikert pulls past Freeland and charges after Ayulo. Bob Swiker took the lead on the sixth lap. Ayulo, Freeland, and Parsons follow. Ayulo is all over Swiker. Parsons presses Freeland on the inside and takes over third place. Swiker is on the last lap and heads for the checkered flag with Ayulo, Parsons, and Freeland on his tail. Hanks and Bettenhausen pick up fifth and sixth positions. 18,000 race fans cheered Swikert into victory circle for his first national championship win. The Sacramento 100 miler was the 11th championship race in 1953. Jimmy Bryant won it in the Springfield Welding Special. Sam Hanks won the 1953 national driving championship in the Barnall Special. The 1954 championship season started with the Indianapolis 500-mile race. 63 cars were entered. Record crowds were on hand for the first weekend of qualifications. The weather was perfect and record speeds were expected by everyone. McGrath sat on the pole with a 141-mile-an-hour average and a new track record. Jimmy Daywald and Jimmy Bryan also qualified for the front row. Henry Banks and George Connor announced their retirement from racing. Manny Ayulo qualified for 22nd starting position in the Peter Schmidt Special. Frank Army started in 33rd position driving the Martin Brothers Special. His qualifying speed would have put him on the front row in 1953. Bob Scott missed the race. Nazareth qualified 14th. Vukovic won his second Indianapolis 500 driving the fuel injection special. His payoff for first place was almost $75,000. How sweet it is. The Milwaukee 100 mile race was a week later. 34 cars were entered. The fastest 22 would make the show. Eddie Sachs was in the Glessner special. Drivers and crews make last minute adjustments and hope for a little more speed. Frank Army hit the wall while qualifying. Marshall Teague found a strange place to park his car while practicing. Bill Vukovic took over Brian's car and sat on the pole. Chuck Stevenson lined up outside Buki. 22 cars head for the green flag. 
Vukovic leads the first lap. Ayulo is second. Rutman is third, and Stevenson is on his tail. Vuki dropped out on lap 77 with steering problems. Jack McGrath moved up to fourth from a 22nd starting position. Chuck Stevenson won the race. Ayulo was second, and Reese third. Aurora Downs was originally a one-mile dirt track in 1927. In 1947, the track was redesigned to a half mile. It was usually rough and dusty. The track was originally built for horse racing and had a nice covered grandstand that pleased the race fans in the summertime. The turns were wide. The drivers had three grooves to race on. Homer Clater, Leon Hubble, Bud Dombrowski, and Paul Carver were the top drivers there. Carver drives out of the dust in first place in his GMC-powered car. The high groove has a cushion, and the low groove is smooth. Dombrowski has a slight advantage. Clater takes the lead in car number one, driving a Ranger-powered car. He went on to win that race. Bob Scott was fatally injured at Darlington on July 5th. He was running eighth in the 200-mile race. He was only 25 years old. The Milwaukee 200-mile race was on August 29th. Freddie Agabation qualified 11th in the Bardall Special. Bob Swiker takes one last puff of his cigarette before the start of the 200-miler. Sam Hanks is on the pole and Chuck Stevenson on the outside. They bring the 26-car field down for the start of the race. The cars are in perfect formation as they head for the green flag. Stevenson leads, Hanks is second, Ayulo third, and Art Cross fourth. The rest of the field spreads out. 199 laps to go. Stevenson is stretching his lead over Hanks. Ayulo is still third. Brian has moved up to ninth from his 19th starting position. Ayulo passes Stevenson on lap 194 and holds on to win the race. Ayulo and his wife in victory circle. Stevenson was second, Brian third. Ducoin was the next stop for the championship cars. Water skiers performed prior to the start of the race program. Sprint cars raced on Saturday and championship cars on Sunday. Don Freeland and Sam Hanks qualified for the front row of the 100-mile race. Bob Swigert, always smooth, chooses the middle of the track as the best lines for the Lutz truck part special. Ray Crawford and Dwayne Carter were both out of the race by lap 65. Roger Ward crashed into the pits on lap 79. His car struck Clay Smith, and he was killed instantly. Clay was the chief mechanic for Chuck Stevenson. Stevenson and Ward tangled on the front stretch, causing the accident. Sam Hanks won the race, Stevenson second, Brian third. The Indiana State Fairgrounds racetrack opened for racing in 1903. Barney Oldfield averaged over 60 miles an hour for one lap. Don Freeland did an endo in the first turn in his qualification run. He was not seriously injured. Ayulo jumped into the lead on lap one. Bob Swiker passed Ayulo in turn three and led for 42 laps. Jimmy Bryan led the last 58 laps and won the race. The next race was Sacramento. The Dean Van Lines car is ready to unload. Bryan and Swiker were good pals. Bryan led the first nine laps of the 100-mile race. McGrath ran second through the race. Bryan led a total of 91 laps and made it two wins in a row and was on his way to winning his first national driving championship. The last race on the championship schedule was Las Vegas. The hot dogs take time out for a photograph. Bryan led every lap and won the Las Vegas 100-miler. Jimmy won five of the 13 races and the National Driving Championship. Bobby Ball was critically injured in a midget race at Carroll Speedway in 1953. He died from those injuries in 1954. A sprint race was run on March 20th, 1955 at Langhorn. 54 Indy Rookie of the Year Larry Crash Crockett was fatally injured in the feature race. Mike Nazrick was the winner. The next sprint race at Langhorn was on May 1st and featured Nazrick on the cover. Mike was leading the race, but on lap 18 was fatally injured in the same place that took Crockett's life. 
The track opened for practice for the 39th Indy 500 the first week in May. A Yulo crashed on May 15th and died on May 16th from massive injuries. Bill Vukovic was favored to win his third Indy 500. On lap 56, Roger Ward crashed on the backstretch. Several cars were involved. Vuki was leading the race. The track was blocked and Vukovic was forced into the wall, causing him to flip violently several times, landing outside of the track. Word spread quickly that Vukovic had died. Jimmy Bryan took the lead on lap 88, but was through for the day on lap 90. Jimmy grabs his cigar, then decides to do a little body work on his race car. Bob Swigert won the race and a kiss from Dinah Shore, plus over $76,000. Bob's wife, Dory, shares the win. This was Swiker's most important victory. The Milwaukee 100-mile race was a week later, and 40 cars were entered. Tom Marchese added a race for non-qualifiers. The first four cars would be added to the 100-mile race. Tony Bettenhausen failed to qualify for the race. Ed Elysian had to run the non-qualifiers race, but finished outside the first four positions. Bob Swikert set fast time for the pole. Swikert and Hoyt are on the front row. Hartley, Easton, Tolan, and Turner made the field through the non-qualifiers race. Swikert hopes to make it two in a row. 22 cars take the green flag from starter Bill Vandewater. The race is on, and it's every man for himself. Swikert is in the lead, and Thompson is on his tail. Reese, Freeland, and Flaherty battle for eighth position. Swikert still leads on lap 37. Thompson sets up a pass. Thompson is the new leader. Brian is fourth. Eddie Russo has his hands full on the racetrack and a big worry that his helmet will come off. Brian is still running in fourth place on lap 98. Thompson has led 63 laps and heads for the checkered flag. Swikert is second. Thompson won $5,400. This was his first championship win. Langhorn was the third race of the season. Swikert and Bryan were the favorites on the fast oil dirt mile track. Don Freeland and George Amick bring the field down for the start and into the first turn. George Amick led the first 20 laps. Johnny Thompson led the next 24 laps. Brian and Swikert were close behind. Jerry Hoyt spun on lap 44. Thompson was unable to miss the stalled car and takes a wild ride. Rain caused a weak delay. Swikert and Brian battled for 56 laps. Brian won with an average speed of 95 miles an hour. The AAA sprint car race at Salem was hot and fast. Andy Linden leads out of turn four, but loses it on the front stretch and takes a scary ride, almost flipping. He was through for the day. Andy won at Salem in July. The Milwaukee 250 was run on August 28th. Ed Elysian put the supercharged Walcott special on the pole alongside Pat Flaherty, but it was Bob Swiker that blew by for the lead on the first lap. Swikert still leads, followed by O'Connor, Brian, and Flaherty, and the rest of the cars fighting to move up. McGrath is running in third. Brian's on his tail, and Flaherty's looking for a mistake in fifth. Brian and McGrath tangle in turn four on lap 16. Both were able to continue. Brian passes O'Connor for eighth place, but has serious handling problems. Brian crashed on lap 62 due to a broken brake assembly. Flaherty took the lead on lap 182. After our cross led for 133 circuits, cross hung onto Flaherty's tail for several laps. Roger Ward pitted with a broken axle. It's the last lap and 16 cars are still in the race. Flaherty heads for the checkered flag. Bettenhausen, Swikert, Cross, and Johnny Boy took the first five positions. Flaherty's first win was worth $8,200. The 1955 Hoosier 100 was the ninth championship race of the year. Edgar Elder had fast time on his first lap. He hooked a rut on his second lap and crashed through the fence in turn four. 
miraculously, he was uninjured. Swikert and Freeland qualified for the front row. Brian was ninth fastest and started in the fifth row. The track was in good shape and the weather was great. Swiker takes the lead on the first lap. Freeland, Amick, Brian, and Bettenhausen follow. Johnny Thompson is running second and is chasing after Swikert up on the high side. Roger Ward spins in turn two. Ed Elysian takes the high groove in turn one and jumps the cushion in turn two. Elysian fights hard to regain control as he heads down the backstretch. Brian took the lead on lap 55 and led the rest of the race. His arms in the air tell it all. Thompson finished second. Sacramento was the last stop. Brian had four wins and was looking for his fifth. George Amick led the first 67 laps. Swikert led the next 31, and Brian led the last two laps. This was his fifth win of the year. The last championship race of the year was at Phoenix. McGrath battled with Brian and held the lead for 13 laps. On the 86th circuit, an axle broke, causing him to flip. He died at the track. Brian won the race, his third in a row. Swikert was the new champion. The 1956 Indianapolis 500 mile race was the first championship race of that year. 55 cars were entered. Brian qualified for the seventh row. O'Connor was the third fastest. Al Herman will start 27th. Troy Rettman qualified the zinc special and will start in row four. Mike McGill was never able to get his car up to speed and he failed to qualify for the race. Jimmy Davies was unable to get the Novi up to speed. He and Gene Marcinac couldn't find the right combination. Johnny Parsons was happy with starting in the second row. Johnny Tolan will line up in the last row. 21 cars failed to make a qualification attempt. Lynn Sutton and Marvin Pfeiffer crashed in practice. Tony Holman addresses the 33-man starting field. Virginia Mayo and Michael O'Shea are on hand for the 500. 16th Street Speedway featured three separate midget races the night before the Indianapolis 500. There were 28 national USAC midget races in 1956. The average purse was $2,500. Total prize money paid out was $138,000. Seven of the 28 races were run at the 16th Street Speedway. The racetrack was across the street from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It was a first-class racing facility. The best cars and drivers from all of the United States raced there in May. As many as 70 entries would show up to qualify, and it was tough to make the show. There were four heat races, a semi-main event, and a main event for each of the three races. The pits were behind the grandstands. 18 cars are lined up for the first feature race. Shorty Templeman won all three features in 1956. The last race ended about the time the bomb went off to open the gates at the Speedway. Shorty won nine races plus the National Midwest and Pacific Coast Midget Championships in 1956. Pat Flaherty won the 500 mile race in the John Zink Special and collected $93,819 and a kiss on each cheek. The Milwaukee 100 was 11 days later. 17 dirt cars and five roadsters make up the 22 car field. Johnny Boyd has the pole. Pat O'Connor starts alongside. The cars are a beautiful sight as they head for the green flag and 100 miles of racing. Boyd is the early leader, Rutman is second. Flaherty is running in fifth. Thompson has his hands full, staying ahead of Swigert. Dick Rathman and Al Keller run side by side in turn four. Boyd has led the first 22 laps. Thompson is second. 18 cars are still in the race. 
Pat Flaherty took the lead on lap 58. Thompson is second. Swikert is third. Bryan fourth. Flaherty is going to make it two wins in a row. He's on lap 199. Boyd has dropped back to fifth place. Flaherty streaks across the finish line. It was his second win on the Milwaukee Mile, and it's the same car he won the Indy 500 in 11 days earlier. Pat picked up another $5,500. Bob Swikert stands with his wife, Dory. He was the 1955 Sprint Car and National Driving Champion. Salem was a week after Milwaukee. This was the eighth Sprint race of the 56 season. Bob loved the high bank tracks. He won at Dayton earlier in the year. Elmer George was on the pole for the 30 lap feature. Swikert started from the second row. George leads on the first lap. O'Connor is second, Elysian third, and Swikert fourth. Swikert has an ill handling race car. Bob gets loose and fights to control his car, but it slides up to the wall and flips violently outside of the racetrack in turn one. Racing lost a true champion. He died from his injuries. Bob always had a friendly smile and loved his fans. A year earlier, his good friend Jerry Hoyt was fatally injured in his sprint car. 27 stock cars take the green flag for the start of the Milwaukee 250. Hanks, Rutman, and Brian were teammates on the Mercury team. Brian was leading, Rutman was second, and Hanks third. Hanks and Rutman were out of the race by lap 222. Brian was the runaway winner of the 250 mile grind. Playland Park Raceway opened in 1933 as a half mile dirt track in Mishawaka, Indiana. Mike Saleh, Carl Scarborough, George Lynch, and Charlie Van Acker all raced there and went on to race in the Indianapolis 500. The surface was oil on dirt, usually slick and dusty. It had no crash walls. It was lined with trees. The drivers were from local organizations and usually put on a good show for the fans. There was a skating rink outside of turn four. It was a great place to bring the family and enough racing thrills to keep the fans on their feet. Harold Gaddis gets a strong challenge by Jim Weldon for the lead. Red Oliver tries the super high groove. Gaddis and Weldon are side by side as they take the flag. It's a dead heat. They're both awarded first place. Fort Wayne Raceway was a fast 5 8 mile high bank track. Red Amink in number 27 was always a threat to win the CSRA races there. Leon Plum passes Tech Shackleford in turn four for third place. Amick leads. Bud Randall is second. The track is bumpy and the groove is narrow. It's hard to avoid contact. Amick still leads. Randall applies a little bump and gets out of the way of a lap car. It's the last lap, and Amick has this one in the bag. Red won his share of races and went on to compete in the Indianapolis 500. On August 12th, the championship cars raced in a non-points event at Dayton. Ed Elysian won the 50-lap race in the Zinc Special. The following week, the champ cars were at Springfield for a 100-mile race. Don Freeland led the first lap. Pat Flaherty crashed on lap eight and was out of racing the rest of the year. Brian won the race, his first win of 1956. Toledo Raceway was a fast 5 8 mile oval. The All-American Racing Association presented sprint car races there. Most of the drivers were from Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. Leon Klum spins in turn two. The track was hard and slick. It was easy to get into trouble. Midway through the race, Johnny White flipped in turn two. His car was junk, but he came out with minor injuries. Raleigh Beale started racing on this track in 1950. The track closed in 1961 and is now a horse racing track. 
Ileana Motor Speedway presented stock cars, sprint cars, and hot rods. In 1956, sprints and hot rods were featured in this same race. The half-mile dirt track was built in 1949. Dwayne Carter won the last AAA sanction race at Ileana in 1954. The better hot rods were pretty competitive to the top sprint cars that were entered. The track was hard and slick, and it was easy to get into trouble. Late in the race, one of the hot rods was involved in a serious crash on the backstretch. The driver was taken to the hospital. The wrecker hauled off what was left of the car. The eight ball sprinter loses its exhaust pipe in turn three. By the end of the race, the hot rods were pretty well outclassed by the best sprinters held their own from third place on back. Most of the cars finished the race. The 1956 Hoosier 100 was run on September 15th. Judd Larson and Roger Ward were in the front row. Jimmy Bryan was back in 10th place. Earl Motter spins on lap one. Tony Bettenhausen was out on lap five. Judd Larson led the first 71 laps. Bryan was second. Ryan took the lead from Larson on lap 72. Elmer George spun on lap 93. George Amick and Earl Motter were in the high groove and tangled trying to miss George's car. All three were out of the race. Brian made it three Hoosier 100 wins in a row. Sacramento was the next race on the championship trail. Brian had four wins and had won at Sacramento the year before. He qualified 13th. A good finish would give Brian his second national driving championship. Jimmy was always tough, and he usually was as strong at the end of the race as he was at the start. Larson and O'Connor were in the first row. O'Connor led the first 12 laps. Larson took the lead on lap 13 and led the rest of the way. Brian was third. This was Larson's first win. Jimmy won his second national driving championship. The 1957 Indianapolis 500 mile race was again the first championship race of the season. Sam Hanks won it and announced his retirement from racing. He collected over $100,000 for his win. The Langhorn 100 mile race was run three days after the Indy 500. Johnny Thompson set fast time and won the race averaging over 100 miles an hour. It was his second championship win. The Rex Mays Classic 100-mile race at Milwaukee was a week later. Jimmy Bryan sat fast time in the Dean Van Line Special. Bryan and Thompson brought the 22-car field down for the start. Bryan led the first 20 laps. Ward took the lead on lap 21. Ward fought Jim Rathman for the lead for several laps. Roger never lost the lead, averaging almost 98 miles an hour. The Race of Two Worlds was held in Monza, Italy on June 29th. 16 American championship drivers flew to Italy for a match race with the European Grand Prix drivers on the high bank 2.640 mile track. The race was divided into two 63 lap heats. Brian won the first race and Troy Rettman won the second. Brian finished second, Jimmy was the overall winner. Fairground racetracks could be found in almost every mid-sized town in the Midwest and were sanctioned by several racing organizations. IMCA and CSRA raced at most of the dirt ovals. The cars were powered by Offies, GMC, Chrysler, Ranger, Ford, Buick, and Pontiac engines. Some of the top stars that raced with the Central States Racing Association were Bobby Grimm, Cliff Griffith, Deb Snyder, Leon Hubble, Sid Bufkin, and Don Carr. The quality of cars was pretty good and the racing was competitive. Most of the racetracks had covered grandstands and gave the fans a comfortable Sunday afternoon at the races. Some of the tracks were plain old dirt, some were clay and dirt, and a few were oil over dirt. Some had crash walls and some didn't. When the checkered flag was waved, the real fans were planning on which race to see next. Cars arrive early for the sprint car races at Davenport on July 7th. It's time to get racy, get those goggles adjusted, and grab two hands full of steering wheel and hang on. 
The cars are lined up perfectly as the starter waves the green flag. It's important to be first on the start because second on back will be driving through a dust storm. Two drivers are locked in a duel in turn four. Bill Nelson takes the lead in turn two. By the end of the race, all that was left of the track surface was lots of plain old dirt. Rookie driver A.J. Foy qualified 25th for the Milwaukee 200 mile race driving the Hoover Motor Express. Andy Linden qualified for the pole at over 102 miles an hour. Pat O'Connor sets second pass time and starts alongside Linden. 26 cars are in the starting field, 15 dirt cars and 11 roadsters. Linden and O'Connor battle for first place as they race through turns one and two. O'Connor took the lead down the backstretch. O'Connor leads by five car lengths. Reese, Boyd, and Rathman follow. Linden is falling back. Everyone makes it through the first lap. O'Connor has led the first 24 laps. Billy Garrett is running ninth after starting 24th. O'Connor still leads. Foyt dropped out on lap number 25. Roger Ward took the lead on lap 60 and led for 53 laps. Rathman was second and Reese was third. Ward and Rathman battle for the lead for several laps. Ward's car overheated and he dropped out of the race on lap 138. Jim Rathman won the race with an average speed of 98 miles an hour. Reese was second and O'Connor third. Jim picked up a check for $8,600. The race is on and 20 cars head for turn one at Ileana Speedway. The Central States Racing Association Sprint Car Drivers race high, low, and in the middle. The track is in great shape. Tech Shackleford found the inside groove to be the fastest way around. Pushing and shoving was a regular part of racing, and everyone loved it. In 1962, Ileana's dirt track was paved over, and USAC sanctioned six stock car races there that year. September 2nd, the beautiful one-mile dirt track in DuCoin, Illinois, played host to a 100-mile USAC championship race. Roger Ward took the lead from pole center Judd Larson on the first lap. On lap four, Jimmy Bryant took a slow roll in turn three while running fourth. He climbed out unhurt, although his cigar was bent beyond repair. The car had very little damage. Bryant surveys the damage and decides to climb back in and continue in the race. Jimmy was six laps down and gave the fans a real show. During the pit stop, he was able to replace his cigar. Judd Larson won the race. Bryant dropped out on lap 22. Elmer George won the Syracuse 100 miler. Judd Larson won the Hoosier 100 a week later. Brian's buddies attempt to hold him back. Pat O'Connor led the last 47 laps at Trenton. His average speed was over 100 miles an hour. It was a new track record. Roger Ward won at Sacramento in the Walcott Special. On the 96th lap of the Phoenix 100 miler, Brian was forced through the fence. While leading, he drove back through the fence. O'Connor was in the lead. Jimmy passed O'Connor on the last lap. He won the race and his third championship. The Trenton 100 mile race was the first championship race in 1958. Lynn Sutton won it in the Central Excavating Special. This was his first championship win. There would be more. There were 60 cars entered for the 1958 Indianapolis 500 mile race. Mike McGill crashed in practice, but his crew was able to repair the car, and Mike qualified for the last row. The 1958 Indianapolis 500 is underway. On the first lap of the race, Elysian spins and takes Rathman with him. Reese collects Bythe and then O'Connor, causing him to flip. Most of the rest of the field is involved. Jerry Unzer cartwheels over the wall, and more cars are trapped in the chain reaction. O'Connor's car is burning. Jerry Unzer escaped with minor injuries. Pat O'Connor suffered fatal injuries. 
It was a bittersweet win for Brian. He and O'Connor were good friends. The Milan Special won two in a row at Indianapolis. The Milwaukee 100 mile race was on June 8th with 30 entries on hand. A.J. Foy qualified eighth for Milwaukee in the Dean Van Line Special. He spun at Indy on the 148th lap and had steering failure on lap 20 in the Milwaukee race. Art Fish and Tony Bentenhausen swapped the lead at Milwaukee. Fish led the last six laps. It was his first championship win. Langhorn was the next race on the championship schedule. Johnny Boy qualified fifth fastest in the new Bo Seal fast car. On lap 18, the car caught fire. Boy bailed out but was seriously burned. The car was destroyed. Eddie Sachs won the race in the Schmidt Special. American drivers returned to Monza to challenge the European drivers again. Luigi Musso and Bob Weiss started on the front row of the first heat. Musso led for three laps, Sachs led six laps, and Rathman took the lead. Rathman won both heats. He took home $39,500. The Atlanta 100-mile race was just five days after Monza. The track was a beautiful one-mile dirt track with a lake inside. Branson and Ward were on the front row of the 18-car field. Art Fish won his only championship race at Milwaukee in June. A month later, he was fatally injured on lap 37. Jed Larson won the race in the Zinc Special. Thompson, Foyt, and Cheeseburg posed before the Springfield race. Larson and Tolan brought the field down for the start. Branson and Larson led the race for 36 laps each. Thompson led the last 28 laps and won the race. 26 cars were lined up for the start in the Milwaukee 200 mile race. 15 dirt cars and 11 roadsters made up the starting field. The race was the last race on State Fair weekend. Flaherty won the 200 mile stock car portion on Thursday and Branson won the 100 mile midget race on Saturday. Jim Rathman sat on the pole with an average speed of over 100 miles an hour in the car that he won Monza in. A.J. Foyt was third fastest in the Dean Van Line Special. Jim Rathman sets the pace for the start of the 200 mile race. Rathman pulls ahead of Bob Fyth. Foyt is third and Tolan fourth. By lap 10, Rathman had a straightaway lead over second place Roger Ward. Don Freeland and George Amy race wheel to wheel through turns one and two. Gene Hartley spun on lap 21. Dempsey Wilson rode over his wheel. Ward took the lead on lap 14. Rathman is second, Fyth is third. Roger has lapped everyone up to fourth place. Bettenhausen moves around Elysian and Fyth in turn number one. Fyth regains second place. It was an easy win for Ward. 21,000 fans were on hand for the 1958 Hoosier 100. Judd Larson led the first lap, Bettenhausen was second, and Thompson third. Eddie Sachs took the lead on lap 51, Thompson second. Sachs won the race and $9,000. Jimmy Reese raced Johnny Thompson for second place on the last lap of the Trenton 100 miler. For some unknown reason, Reese's car shot up to the wall and out of the racetrack. The car was broken in half and Reese was killed. Roger Ward won the race. Johnny Thompson won his fourth race of the year after taking the lead on lap 39 in the Sacramento 100-miler. Phoenix was the last championship race in 1958. Judd Larson and Tony Bettenhausen swapped the lead. Judd won it. Bettenhausen won the national driving championship for the second time. The first championship race in 1959 was at the new two and a half mile Daytona Super Speedway. The racetrack is tri-oval with 31 degrees of banking. George Amy qualified at 176.887 miles an hour in the new Bose Roadster. There were two heats for a total of 150 miles. Amy crashed on the next to last lap of the first heat. His injuries were fatal. Jim Rathman won both heats in the Simon Eye Special. Trenton was the next race. Dick Linder had nowhere to go when Don Branson spun on lap 53. He crashed over the wall and died from injuries. 
Tony Bettenhausen won the Range Shortened 100 miler. It was his first championship win since 1956. The 43rd Indianapolis 500 was scheduled for May 30th, 1959. Track owner Tony Holman welcomed the drivers. Bettenhausen was uninjured in a flip on May 16th. Bob Cortner was fatally injured in practice driving the Cornice Special. Johnny Thompson sat on the pole in the flushing pick number three. 33 cars are lined up for the start of the Indy 500. Thompson, Sachs, and Rathman are on the front row. They'll be racing for $338,000 compared to $200,000 in 1950. Roger Ward passed Johnny Thompson for the lead on lap five. Jim Rathman took the lead on lap 13. Pat Flaherty led a few laps. Ward led the last 115 and won the race with an average speed of 135.8. Thompson is on the pole again for the Milwaukee 100. Thompson leads and Ward is second heading into turn one of the start. Red Amick and Jim Rathman crashed in turn one. Thompson led every lap and won $6,400. The Langhorn 100 mile race was next in the championship schedule. Van Johnson took the lead from Elmer George on the 74th lap. This was Johnson's first championship win. Unfortunately, Van was fatally injured a week later at Williams Grove. Roger Ward was the winner. There was always lots of sprint car races at the county fairs in the 50s. The drivers were brave and tough and drove without roll cages, fire suits, or shoulder harnesses. The cars were a real handful. They didn't have power steering, and the suspension was not very flexible. By the time the main event was run, the track had lots of ruts, and the drivers were battered and bruised by the end of the race. It didn't pay much to win a race on the fair circuit, but the roar of the crowd and the tight competition made it worthwhile. The checkered flag was always a welcome sight. Shorty Templeman and Johnny Thompson set the pace for the Milwaukee 200. Thompson led till lap six. Bettenhausen took the lead for several laps, and then Ford took over first place. Elysian flipped on lap 27 and was fatally injured. Roger Ward won his second race of the year. Williams Grove Speedway in Pennsylvania was a tough half-mile dirt track. Johnny Thompson loved to race there and won his share of events. He drove for Sam Trailer and won the 1958 Eastern Championship. Johnny was thrown from his sprint car on September 13th. His injuries were serious. Jim Herdebees took over Thompson's championship car. It was the beginning of the changing of the guard. Herdebees, Foyt, Jones, Marshman, and Rutherford will be the new headliners in the 60s. Herdebees won at Sacramento, the last race of the 59 season. Roger Ward was the champion. A.J. Foyt was leading the 1960 National Driving Championship going into the last race of the year at Phoenix. Foyt won the race and the championship driving the Bose Seal Fast Special. This was only the beginning of A.J.'s winning career. Parnelli Jones was another hard charger that would make his mark in the 60s. His driving style was smooth, fast, and smart. A sprint car race at Terre Haute cut another potential star of the 60s career short. That was Wayne Weiler. Jim Herdebees drifted a little high and Weiler rode over his wheel, sending him into a series of violent flips. Wayne received a serious head injury that ended his USAC career. Racing in the 60s was exciting, fierce, and sometimes fatal, but one thing was for sure, the stars of that era were legends.